It's time for Inside the L, the podcast covering all things LaSalle athletics and taking you behind the scenes. And now, here's your host, Ed LaFerge. That's right. You are listening to Inside the L, the podcast. Really excited for another good episode here for you guys. This one's brought to you by our sponsors and good friends at Broom Street. We thank them for their continued support of LaSalle Athletics. Folks, make sure you subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify, and subscribe on YouTube by searching LaSalle Athletics on all three platforms. That way you get notified every time we put a new episode out. Uh, We're really excited um, for what we're going to talk about on today's episode. We've got a great crew of folks that um, I have the good pleasure to sit and chat with. Uh, We're going to take a look at this new program within the athletic department geared towards our senior student athletes called Defining Your Difference. We're gonna talk with Jim Brown, the EVP and strategic advisor at Crane Communications who works with the program, as well as Jenny Edwards, who's uh, the LaSalle Athletic Special Assistant to Athletic Administration and a 2020 volleyball alum. And then we're going to catch up with one of the student athletes from the program, Riley Allen, who's a senior on our field hockey team. And then on our alumni spotlight, we're going to chat with Steve McHugh. He's the CEO of Broom Street and a LaSalle alum. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm going to talk to my my, my good friend now, Jim Brown and Jenny Edwards. Jim, Jenny, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to chat with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, most grateful. We're, uh, we feel very uh, fortunate to be with you this afternoon, Ed. Thank you for uh, reaching out. You know, I had, I had the good pleasure of joining you guys for one of your sessions last week, and that was a really, really cool opportunity for me to see what you're doing with, with our student athletes. And so I'm really excited to tell this story um, and, and talk about the different engaging pieces that you guys provide for them. But first and foremost, um, how are you both doing? Pandemic's been crazy. Um, I hope you guys are both okay and, and, and your families are doing well. Well, Jenny, why don't you jump in first? Uh, yeah, doing pretty great, as good as can be, just, you know, taking day by day right now. Yeah, and I would, I would echo that as well, Ed. You know, I've got a wife and three kids and you know, um, one's uh, still in college. We have uh, uh, one that just graduated and another one that's graduated some years ago in a, in a pretty successful business career. But uh, my wife and I feel very fortunate. Things are uh, in, uh, in real good shape. Yeah, I, my, my one answer I always give to everybody when they ask how I'm doing with the pandemic and everything, I said, look, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm employed and I'm healthy. And so is my family. So I can't ask for much more than that. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. Jim, Jim, let, let, let's start with you first. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do for work. Okay. Well, uh, you know, um, and it's, a, it's an interesting uh, story. I'll try to be concise here. I've got a 30 year career in the broadcast industry. I've worked at uh, CBS uh, television. I, I, I worked as part of uh, creating two startup companies that were sold. Um, I spent a fair amount of time in the radio business, uh, working for a firm, privately held firm, Greater Media. Uh, Local folks in in the listening area might recognize the radio stations, WMMR, WMGK, which is Magic, uh, the the Fanatic, the FM Sports Station, and then Ben FM. And I was lucky enough to be the um, group sales manager for uh, for that uh, particular operation, and it was fantastic. So... That's really like uh, the Reader's Digest uh, version um, of, the, of my career. But in January, before knowing the pandemic was hitting, what was going to hit rather, I started my own company. It's an executive business coaching company. And I partner up with uh, a woman named Karen Crane, who owns the Crane Communications. And anyway, I'm doing executive business coaching. And um, I helped launch a, a radio show this particular year. Um, um, uh, called uh, Voices of Faith, uh, which is a labor of love and going extremely well. Uh, uh, I'm, I am coaching with a couple of uh, rather large firms in town, just uh, getting with their executives and trying to help uh, help enhance communication skills and performance uh, on a business level. And of course, uh, the big passion, one we're going to talk about today, creating a program called Defining Your Difference at LaSalle University. 
Thank you, Jim. And, and Jenny, you're, you're in a unique role as a graduate assistant working with the athletics administration at LaSalle. Like we said before, um, you know, your title is a special assistant to athletic administration. Um, tell us a little bit about your role and kind of for you being a recent alumni uh, of LaSalle. Talk to, talk to us a little bit about what your role is and how uh, interesting it is for you to be back uh, kind of on the other side uh, this time. Yeah, so um, I didn't actually plan on coming back and starting my master's right out of undergrad. I was actually supposed to be in the Peace Corps. Uh, I was supposed to move to Zambia in August, but COVID obviously has thrown us some curveballs. Sure. So um, Dan Lobach, uh, uh, we had a great relationship in my undergrad, and he asked uh, my whole head coach, Andrew, if I would be interested in coming back. So we went back and forth for a while and I am now back. And it's a really different experience being on the administrative side rather than being a student athlete. Um, obviously I love the school, so I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to be getting a master's and I'm happy to be employed. So it's been really great and I get to work on cool programs like this. So I think it's gonna be a really great experience and a really great way to use my postgrad year. Well, we're definitely um, happy and excited to have you back at LaSalle. Um, so we, we're, we're glad to see, see you around the halls every day and uh, see you doing great things like this program that we're going to talk about here. Uh, Jim, how did, how did defining your difference come about? Whose idea was it? Where did it start? Talk us through the process of, you know, how we ended up where we are now and, and working with the student athletes here at LaSalle. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a good story. Great question, by the way. So um, defining your difference uh, is something that I created and, and, and edit something that I'm not just using with the students, the student athletes, let's say at LaSalle University, but I'm using it in my private work as well. Um, you know, it's, it, there's a, I, I love, there's a wonderful quote I love, a Mark Twain quote, and it says, there are two significant days in our lives, the day we're born and the day we figure out why. And, you know, my entire career through my broadcast journey in my management roles, I was really um, laser focused on helping folks kind of, what's the word, you know, uh, do their best to be their best every day. And so I took that concept in this business that I started and, you know, and leaned into it at LaSalle. So the process is, uh, uh, goes something like this, and then I'll let Jenny comment on it. We ask each one of the, uh, the participants to take a short survey. It's uh, 14 to 16 minutes. It's like a predictive index or uh, a Gallup uh, survey. Right. You answer a bunch of questions. It defines what kind of personality traits you bring to your journey, let's say. And um, what we're asking our student athletes to do at LaSalle is take a look at that large document with Jenny and I uh, supporting and let's discover the three attributes that, that really distinguish you as a human being, right? And, and you know, it could be that, you know, you're coachable, uh, you're courageous and you're resourceful, or it could be that you're, um, you know, uh, smart, hardworking, and you're a problem solver. Um, just to kind of involve Jenny here. Um, hey, Jenny, would you mind sharing with Ed, you know, the three attributes, the three reasons why you've always been successful and why you will always be successful moving forward your three attributes please yeah so mine we call it the three c's for me it's creative compassionate and courageous which is pretty amazing and can you get, can you dig in a little bit like how you got into those three c's for us yeah so creative um i think is like my most most multifaceted one um, I like to like paint and do poetry and do art, that kind of thing. And then also I think I'm a really great problem solver. And I think that that mends well to creativity. Um, for compassionate, Jim actually is the one that kind of pushed me towards compassionate. Um, I care about other people really deeply. And I hope that that care for other people is going to lend itself to a future career eventually. And then courageous, I'm always going to be the first one to raise my hand and I'm okay with being wrong and I'm good with taking critiques. So I think that those are the reasons that um, people should hire me pretty much. Well, so I, I would say that that translates well to your desire to have gone into the Peace Corps, right? Like those, those, those make complete sense. Yes, I would think so. 
Definitely. It, it's, it's funny at how natural this all flows, right? So Jenny, Jenny uh, got a little smile on her face when she talked about, you know, I, I really asked her to consider the concept of compassion because one of the words she was working with, and I thought added up for her as well, was the concept of her confidence. I think that she does her homework. She's prepped in, in everything that she brings to a, a particular opportunity. But I felt like, I felt like, you know, the courageous and confident thing could could lend itself or blend together, let's say. And when you saw Jenny tell that piece of, uh, uh, of her story, that elevator speech, I'll say, these are the things when, you know, Jenny's going out to grab a job and it's between Jenny and, and, and the kid from, uh, you know, the kid from Harvard and the kid from Stanford. We're, we're trying to prepare Jenny in such a way that she distinguishes herself in that interview process. She, she can define her difference. And the stunning thing for me, Ed, is, and Jenny can comment on this, what's striking to me is I know some folks that are 30 and 40 and 50 years old that can't define their difference. They really can't put their fingers, uh, quick, finger quickly on, on an answer to that question. And Ed, you were part of a call, uh, I think it was last week, um, where you saw us, a group of us, the, uh, the Zoom calls that we do, they occur on Tuesdays and Thursdays, generally from uh, four to five. Um, and Jenny and I make ourselves available for one-on-ones and we've done a lot of them um, in the evenings, on the weekends, um, at scheduled time with different student athletes. But it gives us, these calls give us a, a chance for four, six, eight of us to get together and really debate some of these things. I, I, I vividly remember when Jenny and I were kind of rolling through her three attributes. I think it was Sam, Samantha, one of the girls, uh, one of the ladies actually said, I, to be honest with you, Jenny, I kind of like the compassionate thing um, because, you know, you were a part of the volleyball team. You kind of distinguished yourself as, hey, wait a second, let's all circle the wagons and and be on the same page, you know, have that 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 whole concept that you know, culture matters, not just, you know, winning the volleyball game, you know, winning the volleyball game the right way. So I hope that answers your question, Ed, yeah, around, yeah. The, <laughs> around how this all got together and what the heck it is to find your difference, that is. Yeah. So, so Jenny, talk to me a little bit about uh, how many student athletes do we have involved and how, uh, what was the process in selecting those student athletes? Sure. So there's 34 student athletes that are part of the program and they were selected by their coaches. So it's two seniors on each team, their coaches. And then Brian also had a say and who was picked. And uh, I think Jim and I would agree that we have about 20 that we think are really getting something from the program. And then the other 14, uh, we've like opened ourselves up for one-on-ones and that kind of thing, any kind of coaching that they would need but some of them are international. So the time doesn't work great or they have class during that time. So we're really trying to accommodate all of them. But I would say that we have a really solid 20 that are really getting something out of the program. And we even have uh, one of the female student athletes who yesterday actually got an internship uh, from one of the people that we introduced her to on the call. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that that's, sounds like the program is certainly firing on all cylinders then. Is that yeah, what fair to say? I think it's definitely a sign of success. Yeah. Um, so, so, so Jim, you talked a little bit about how, you know, you guys meet uh, Tuesday, Thursdays and, and one-on-ones, uh, you know, scheduled. Um, but how, how is the program structured? Is there, is there a strict structure in place? Is it more open-ended? Is it more fluid? Um, and uh, what do your meetings look like? Right. So like I was involved in, in, in one of those group meetings and, you know, there's a couple procedures and, and housekeeping items that you go through each time. And, you know, what, what do those one-on-ones look like? What are some of the topics that you guys discuss? And, and, and how are you looking to make, you know, the student athletes more successful? No, oh, that's a great question. So, um, as I mentioned, I think the heart and soul of the program are the, uh, the Zoom calls. You know, the, the two calls we do uh, for an hour each week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, where we do gather as a group because it gives, as I mentioned earlier in the call, an exchange uh, for all the student athletes. You know, people get to challenge each other as you witnessed, I hope, on the call that you were a part of. Um, you see input from others. Basically, the way that call is structured is the first 15 minutes, Jenny and I decided to um, 
to have that kind of open exchange with our guest speaker, um, kind of observing. Um, I, was Tim Abel the gentleman that was on? Yep. All right. So Tim Abel was, uh, just as an example for our listening audience, Tim Abel was our business executive that kind of sat in on the call. So the first 15 minutes we go through our, our, our normal um, uh, patterns, let's say, of what I just discussed. And then for 20 minutes, maybe 25, um, the executive that we invite, Jenny and I gather uh, with, we kind of interview that human being and ask them to tell their story. And Tim talked to us about being in the banking industry and all the roller coaster rides that he's experienced, you know, the ups and downs of his career, so forth and so on. And the beauty of that is it allows our student athletes to have a 20 minute um, question and answer session with Tim afterwards. And so we, we roll through that process. It's, I, I would say it's really healthy and I'd love to get Jenny's feedback on that as I, when I finish. And then the, the, the nice thing about it is at the end of the call, we do a thing called the two minute drill. And we ask each student to, uh, um, to basically summarize, you know, well, what did you get from this today, uh, Isaiah? What did you get from this Cy? What did you get from this um, Lizzie? And it's fascinating to me that each human being hears something a little different and they take something different away from the process. And then of course, Jenny's favorite part of the program, all the student athletes get to uh, uh, give uh, our, our guests a grade on a scale of one to 10 was, was Tim Abel really good and he was a 10 or was he a five because he's a stinker. And, and then of course there's a competition because then I'm graded as well. And I, 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 my first couple of sessions, I, I, I was thrilled to death to be undefeated. I was like the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then all of a sudden, Jenny, you know, you talk about courage, man, she started to like crush me in the grades. And of course the rest of the students piled on. So like, I'm like, I'm like our uh, Eagles football quarterback right now. I'm just throwing interceptions and I'm under the water so far. It's frightening. I, I do a lot of crying after the call. I try not to do that in front of the student athletes because I just don't want to lose their respect. Jenny, what are your th thoughts on uh, how the, uh, the whole process is going? Um, I think it runs really smoothly. I think the first 15 minutes are really great to like dig in with each athlete. And then I think it's really important that we have like 20, 25 minutes to really hear about other people's careers and what they think is the most important information for us to have, because also I'm a recent graduate, so I'm not super different from the seniors right now. Sure. Sure. So hearing all of that, like really good information is awesome. And then being able to ask them questions in an open environment is really, really cool. And Jenny, would you mind uh, sharing with Ed and our listening audience, like yesterday it was what a great moment when, 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 um, when Lizzie told us, oh my God, you know, the, the, we, I defined my difference. She used our document, Ed, and she got this internship. And it was pretty amazing because in her conversation, she shared that one of our guest speakers, uh, a lady named Tanya Murphy, gave her guidance on how to kind of, uh, uh, in addition to Jenny and I, gave her guidance on, hey, this is what I see from your journey, um, uh, Lizzie. And she introduced Lizzie to this job opportunity. Wow. But Jenny, talk a little bit about the excitement and how Lizzie called you the night before in terms of preparation, because I want our folks at LaSalle, all of our listeners, to, to really understand the, the commitment that the school has made to this program. So, uh, so talk a little bit about your exchange with Lizzie and the excitement we shared yesterday through the Tanya Connection. Yeah, so pretty much I think that like my biggest role in this is being like a creative helper for everyone. So like helping them like talk through things like whatever they need from me on um, like there to do. Um, so like Lizzie called me just to like go over some stuff and just if I had any advice, which I don't know if I'm really qualified to give because you know, I just graduated from college. But uh, to just like go over their words and just like make them feel like empowered and confident. So I think that that is just pretty much my main role there. Which is amazing. Ed. You, uh, just so you know, we, we, before we, we turn the mics on, the three of us were just catching up around the whole concept of culture and communication. And I think it's a life skill, right? And I, I, I must tell you in, in, in all the... Um, uh, in all the craziness of COVID-19, if you ask me, well, Jim, give me a takeaway from this insanity. 
I think the silver lining for me is I'm, I'm discovering that, that this group of uh, student athletes at LaSalle, let's say, you know, I think they're the next great generation. You know, I, I believe these guys and gals are going to have an impact on the world that we're going to be incredibly proud of five, 10, 15 years from now, because it, 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 I, I kind of believe that life is great on Monday and then on Tuesday it gets bad. And then on Wednesday, it gets ordinary. And then on Thursday, it gets draining. And then on Friday, it gets great again. And, and learning how to navigate that journey, you know, the, the, the ups and downs that we all experience, I think is critical. And, you know, Jenny and I've talked pretty deeply about this offline. You know, I, I think the biggest trip we're ever going to take is not the trip to Paris or, 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 or to Africa, which Jenny will eventually get to, my bet. Um, it's the journey of understanding who we are, what our purpose is. And I'll go back to the Mark Twain quote, you know. Um, there's another wonderful quote. One of the things that Jenny and I are encouraging the student athletes to do is to lock into a quote, you know. Uh, watch, watch, watch this, Ed. Hey, Jenny, can you, can you give our listeners like a, a quote that kind of gives you guidance on those crazy days? Um, one of my biggest quotes and that I think I try to live my life by is uh, what can I do to make the mountain taller so the next people can see further because um, I just feel like my my life doesn't feel like it's going anywhere unless I'm doing something that's going to serve someone that's next so I think it's important to make sure to like empower people and continue to have good things happen well you know and I, I think it's interesting that that you talk about everybody kind of having their quote and last week when I was on and, and Tim was speaking and he, he gave the quote to the group. Um, it's not about who's right. It's about what's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's something that I've taken away from, from that 60 minute experience I had with you all and, and the group of our student athletes. And that's something that I've employed into my daily life. And so you know, it's, it's really, it's really great to hear and to see that our student athletes are, are gaining something really empowering through this program. And, and I appreciate, you know, the mentorship that you guys are giving to those student athletes. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's been, it's been our pleasure. And I, I don't want to take up too much airtime here. I know you're trying to accomplish many goals with the show and um, we're here to support you in any way we can. So you're most welcome to join us any Tuesday or Thursday. We are going to take a little bit of a break through the holiday season. Jenny and I are going to have to talk a little bit about our next guest. We, it's really bizarre. Um, there's a gentleman named Mike Smith, uh, and, and I haven't even told Jenny this. Mike Smith was formerly the um, uh, personnel director, uh, HR director, rather, uh, for the NFL. And, 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 and uh, I saw him give a speech, not knowing anything at all about him, Ed. What do you hear this, Jenny? And um, blown away by the dude, like flat out blown away. I called him to connect around the concept of Voices of Faith, this radio show that I'm doing, right? And in dialogue, um, don't fall off your seat, Ed. Guess where he went to, uh, guess where he went to college? LaSalle University. How about that? I mean, this, and he says to me, he, he did his undergraduate work at LaSalle. He went to, uh, well, what's his name, to Villanova. He's going to uh, start a program at Vanderbilt. He's got all sorts of degrees. Um, he's as tight as can be with a lady I think you both recognize. I think her name's Colleen. She's the president of LaSalle. He serves on an advisory board. He says to me, wait a second, you, you, you know um, uh, Colleen? I'm like, yeah. And I have a relationship with another executive at the NFL, Kathy Graham, that we spoke of. But, but here's my point. <laughs> um, it's a small world. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Timmy Abel, you know, it's not, um, you know, who's right. It's what's right. There's so much common ground here. And one of the things that uh, troubles me is the, is the concept that many human beings appear to be finding, you know, what's wrong with the guy sitting across the aisle as opposed to, or the, the lady across the aisle, as opposed to what's right. And I'll, I'll repeat myself. I really, uh, Ed, I'm not part of LaSalle University. I've been invited in to, to make a contribution, but I, I couldn't be more proud of the young student athletes I'm, I'm working with. You and Jenny are part of a university that's really 
distinguished itself through the Christian brothers and the leadership they bring to the party. Yeah, it's 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 really amazing the 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 work that our student athletes do and will continue to do in the future. And and, and Jenny, sort of as a, a follow up for you from something you had said before, you know, mentioning that you know, you, you did just graduate. So you're not far off from where, uh, you know, the student athletes that we're working with are. But as a former student athlete who just graduated this past May, how beneficial do you think this program is for our student athletes? I think it's going to be really beneficial. I think that we're going to see probably a third of them get their first job out of this program because of the connections that they've been able to make. I know that I've made really awesome connections that I think that I'll probably use to network in my professional life. So I think that this is going to be really important because I don't think that as student athletes early on in our careers, we are told super heavily how important networking is. So I think that this is going to give a really good opportunity for rising seniors and seniors to be able to communicate with people who are going to be able to take them to that next level and get them that really awesome first post-grad job. Well, Jim, Jenny, I really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to, to, to chat with us and, and, you know, talk, talk about defining your differences and, and the program at LaSalle that we're doing with our senior student athletes. So I really appreciate you guys for, for giving me some time. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We had a blast. Thank you, Ed. That was Jim Brown and Jenny Edwards, who works with our Defining Your Difference program at LaSalle for our senior student athletes. Uh, it, it's really remarkable, the work that, that they're doing. And I, like I said, I, I was fortunate to sit, um, sit in on one of their calls um, a few weeks ago. And man, it was great just, just seeing the, the professional that they bring in to network with the student athletes, to let them hear about the story that they went through. And then the student athletes get to sit and ask questions and, and learn about what it's like to, to be a professional in the world. So really exciting things coming out of that group. And we're excited for uh, our next guest is Riley Allen, who is a participant in the program. Um, so we're gonna see after these uh, quick words from some of our sponsors, uh, how, how much it's impacting her and, and the differences that it's making on her career so far. We'll be right back. Time. time to get a health plan that's perfect for times like this. A plan that has you covered for free doctor visits 24-7 with telemedicine and more. Get the plan more people choose than any other. Call 1-855-251-3131 today to get an Independence Blue Cross plan. And we're back here on Inside the L, the podcast. Thank you to Jim Brown and Jenny Edwards for chatting with us about defining your difference. And we're gonna continue that conversation now. We're gonna be joined by Riley Allen. She's a senior on our field hockey team here at LaSalle. Riley, thanks for joining us. How are you? How's your family doing uh, during all this uh, craziness? Hi Ed, thank you for having me. Um, things have been great. I've been doing really well. My family has been doing well as well. <laughs> good, good, good to hear. So. Riley, you've been involved in the Defining Your Difference program for some time now. How, how's it been going so far? Um, it is honestly life-changing. It has opened my eyes to see how to like brand myself um, and what attributes I contribute to the world and kind of society and things like that. Um, Mr. Brown helps you figure out three attributes that define yourself when you're in an interview or in life in general. And it's very helpful. Um, you get to meet a lot of the different student athletes which is very rewarding because you can hear their stories and kind of learn from them. Um, but it's been loads of fun. The people are great. Um, Mr. Brown is great. Jenny's great. All the speakers are really awesome as well. So are there elements of this program that you think have already significantly impacted you as a graduating senior? Oh, for sure. Um, definitely the different speakers that come in, they tell us their stories and we kind of learn from their experiences and where they have come from. Um, and it kind of helps you in the interviewing setting and how to brand yourself and kind of distinguish yourself from other people that are also trying to get that same internship or job offer. Um, it gives you confidence. The program really has helped you public speak, whether you're speaking in front of your fellow athletes or just speaking to um, someone higher up in a different company and things like that. So it's definitely helpful and has opened my eyes to see like what I have to bring to the table. What have been some of the highlights of the program so far for you? 
Um, besides meeting like um, a bunch of amazing uh, speakers, definitely uh, Mr. Webster, who was an alumni, he's offered me um, an intern position at PMC uh, Property Group, which um, would be really awesome to do for the summer. Um, so that's something interesting that I've had the opportunity to, I guess, like talk to him about and learn more about his um, company. And yeah, it's been really awesome. Well, congratulations. That's certainly exciting. And, and you know, we talked to, um, you know, when we were talking to Jim and, and, and Jenny, he had, Jim had mentioned, hey, R Riley may bring this up. I, I think she's going to tell you about an internship she may have gotten. So I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm super excited for you. Um, I want to transition a little bit. Um, you guys started working out on campus again, uh, I guess the beginning of October. Um, how has that been? How good has it been to be back with your teammates and with your coaches? What, what's that process sort of been like for you? Um, it's been loads of fun. It definitely is something that you have to adapt to because um, practicing and training in maths is definitely hard, but it's been so much fun seeing the girls. It's kind of a sense of normalcy, which I think we all need in times like these kind of times. Um, but the only downside is that I wish more of the girls could be there. Like I love seeing sure. the same girls but definitely getting more girls out on the field would have been more fun. But um, I think it's been so much fun. I love seeing the coaches and just playing the game I love to play. So it's been a load of fun. And uh, talk to us a little bit about managing classes while going through the pandemic and being virtual and workouts on campus and, and how that's kind of gone. Yeah, um, it's definitely very hard just because it's a totally different setting. Zoom classes, I know a lot of students have issues with it, me including. I love seeing my teachers and being in a more personal level with them. Um, but it definitely takes a lot of time management skills. But I feel like being a senior now, I've honed in on those skills and really managed my time efficiently. So it's been kind of easier for me. But I know um, a lot of students are struggling with that. And it's okay to ask for help. Like I know I talk to my roommates a lot whenever I'm like not able to like get my work done or having hard times with that. But um, field hockey definitely lets you stay in kind of like a schedule. Cause I noticed when um, the pandemic hit, we were kind of all out of like schedule, but having those meetings and those practice times scheduled every Tuesday and Thursday and Friday, um, it definitely let you say, hey, like there's some sort of normalcy, which is definitely something that I'm thankful for and appreciate. Sure. All right. We're going to, we're going to jump into our fast five, which we do on, on every episode with one of our guests. It's going to be rapid fire questions. Um, give us the answer that comes to you. Um, so what was your, obviously we, you were quarantined. We were all quarantined for a while during the pandemic. What is your go-to quarantine show? Probably new girl. Yes, definitely new girl. I've heard a lot of people say positive things about New Girl. I've never seen it though, so I'm. You have, have to watch it. You have to watch it, Ed. Check it out. What if you were to have to go into quarantine again? What would your go-to quarantine items be? Definitely my bed. Um, definitely chocolate, and probably I guess my laptop to watch TV to watch New Girl. There you go. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, if you could go back um, to your sophomore, junior year of high school and be offered a full scholarship for any sport other than field hockey, what would it be and why? I feel like it would have to be volleyball. I mean, granted, my one roommate, Riley uh, Lowe, was a volleyball player, but um, probably volleyball because they're like diving on the ground and stuff. I feel like I would like that, I guess. You feel like you have the athletic ability. You would have to be a libero because you're not super tall. So. No, I definitely could see myself doing that. Like, like flailing on the ground trying to get the ball I feel like that'd be fun and the volleyball team's really awesome so that'd be cool there you go um who is your favorite athlete of all time and why okay this is a hard one my favorite athlete would probably have to be my sister Courtney um she worked hard and was like a go-getter from the start and I really admire her and that was the reason why I fell in love with field hockey so um kudos to her and thank and like I'm thankful for her that's awesome older sister I assume yeah, she is older than me. Yeah. Cool. All right. Real simple. Last one. School colors are blue and gold. If you had to pick one, you take it blue or you take it gold? Blue, for sure. Blue. All blue right. All the way. Well, Riley, we really appreciate you giving us a few minutes here. No, thank you, Ed. I really appreciate it and have a great day.
Yeah, you too. That was Riley Allen, senior on our field hockey program, and she is a part of the Defining Your Difference program that we started here with Jim Brown and Jenny Edwards leading that. We talked to them earlier. Coming up next on our alumni spotlight, we're going to touch base with Steve McHugh. He's a 1988 grad of LaSalle University, and he's the CEO of Broom Street, one of our corporate sponsors in the athletic department. Stay tuned after these quick messages. Sports are back and at LaSalle, they truly are something special. And boy, come game day, we take it to the next level. Fans are locked in, wearing their finest blue and gold. But it's only a real game day at LaSalle when you have done one more thing. Break out the hers. Dial up the crunch with hers pub pretzels. Going for the snack win doesn't get easier or tastier. You break out the crunchy dip receiver with hers ridge chips. Both go perfectly with cheering on the Explorers to the last second. Game time, halftime, overtime. It's your time to break out the hers. And welcome back to Inside the L, the podcast. Time for our alumni spotlight. And this week we have Steve McHugh. He's the CEO of Broom Street. A 1988 graduate of LaSalle, degrees in mathematics and computer science. And Steve, thanks so much for joining us. How have you been during these uncertain times? Uh, it's been a long road, I tell you that. Uh, what's it now? Seven months? Eight Some, months of this? Yeah. So summer wasn't so bad, but now it looks like it's going to be a little, uh, little hard to get out in about the next couple months. Talk to us a little bit about what your experience was like at LaSalle. Oh, I had a great experience. Um, uh, I had uh, have friends for life. Um, I have a long history at LaSalle. My father went there. My uh, my wife's father went to LaSalle High School. Her uncle went to LaSalle. My mother worked there. Uh, my brother went to LaSalle when I was there. So we have a pretty we had a pretty big family connection to LaSalle. It sounds like the so I've always been sort of always been part of the LaSalle community and I've always felt that uh, it's important um, to give back and so but I had a great experience we were there when LaSalle's basketball team was sort of one of the best in their history with Lionel Simmons uh, sure. one of my best friends was the basketball manager so we you know being such a small school we had a lot of great basketball experiences at LaSalle really sounds like the the, the blue and gold runs through your family's bloodline a little bit a little bit, yeah. Um, how much of an impact has LaSalle had on, on your career? Uh, you know what? Um, I thought, you know, the program, computer science was pretty new back in 1988. So uh, it's had a big impact. Uh, uh, I could have probably done better in school, you know, but uh, um, the classes were hard as I went along um, and uh, it prepared me well you know, personally and professionally, you know, just, just get learning to be away from home, get along with people. I thought that was very important. All types of people, you know, being exposed to different things, living in a city, you know, that was exciting for me. I, I, I grew up outside of Bucks County in Bucks County. So that was a big change for me getting used to being, and I loved it. I really, I love being in the city. You know, you mentioned uh, Lionel Simmons and, and the bas men's basketball team and the success that they had when when you were a student here and do you have any memories that really stand out to you from 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 the basketball games you may have gone to i think the most fun was the year before um they made it to the nit final it was lionel's freshman year so we had three busloads go to madison square garden sold out madison square garden and watch them in not only this finals but the semifinals. they made it to the finals that year and i thought that was exciting you know to go up to, to to play for a championship um i thought that was the most exciting um time and all the games at the plestra i mean back then all the games were played at the plestra so you would go into the city and you'd have uh plestra double headers with temple LaSalle, villanova 
you know, and then everybody would go to the bars afterwards and uh, all the schools. So it was really quite a family affair. Um, and that changed after, I guess, Villanova won their championship. But uh, that was that was very that whole the whole the whole environment was a fun place. You know, it was really fun. But to stand out, the NIT championship game was the most fun going up to New York City and watching them play for the championship was pretty fun. Three bus loads. That sounds like a lot of people. And that, that sounds like a cool experience. Yeah, it was fun. What are some of the reasons that that you choose to be a corporate sponsor with LaSalle Athletics and and give back to the athletic department? You know, being that my family history is so uh, deep at LaSalle, um, you know, my mother actually worked at uh, LaSalle. So I got a little break on tuition, you know, so it was important for me to give back. Not, we give back not only to the athletic program, but we give back to the the computer science mathematics program as well, which is just as important to me. Um, so um, the fact that I got so much from my LaSalle experience, I feel it's incumbent to me to give back. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I live in Delaware, so I don't get as much of a chance to go up there as much as I'd like to. Uh, but um, I, I think I thought it was very important for me to 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 sponsor the basketball team, basically in the athletic program and also the uh, academic side as well. Tell, tell us a little bit about Broom Street and what you guys offer. Okay, we are a um, pretty much a full service IT consulting company. So we do things like we work with um, uh, the cloud, providing services to uh, manufacturing companies that uh, so we'll provide the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure. We do a lot of business consulting. We work with enterprise resource planning software. So uh, we offer a, a, a wider range of services um, and have been doing so for 30 years. Um, and um, I just think I got in at the right time because computers were so such a nascent uh, field when I went to LaSalle. I mean, no one really had a computer. You know, there was no such thing as email when I went to LaSalle. So it's a pretty big, uh, it's been a lot of technology change. And and I think just timing helped out for me and a little hard work and luck. And uh, it's been a nice ride. Well, Steve, we appreciate you giving us a, a couple of minutes here to chat about your experience at LaSalle and, and about Broom Street. And, and we really appreciate your continued support of the uh, LaSalle athletics programs. Thank you. All right, that was Steve McHugh, 1988 graduate, the CEO of Broom Street. We thank him for joining us on our alumni spotlight and his continued support of LaSalle Athletics. That's going to do it for, for this episode. It was a great opportunity to talk about defining your difference, the, the, the new program that we have going on with some of our senior student athletes. Um, we heard from Jim Brown, Jenny Edwards, who worked with the program, and then Riley Allen, a senior field hockey student athlete who is a part of the program, and then of course, Steve McHugh, uh, who's an alumni, 1988 grad, mathematics and computer science, and the CEO of Broom Street, one of our corporate sponsors. So we thank everybody for their time. Make sure you go ahead and search LaSalle Athletics on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts to stay up to date with all of your Inside the L, the podcast materials. I'm Ed LaFerge. It's been a great time, folks. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for listening to Inside the L, the podcast. Go Explorers!